Psalms number one and two. I started this message last week. I'm going to try to finish it the Lord's will today. Part two, stick with the Lord through thick and thin. If you're going to have faith, you got to stick with the Lord through what? Thick and thin. Thick and thin. Amen? Regardless of what you've been through or going through or dealing with, I want you to stick with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, I want you to stick, want you to stick with, the Lord, with the Lord like Gorilla Glue. Like glue. Y'all know what Gorilla Glue is. You know, you know what uh, uh, Elmer Glue is, don't you? Come on. You know what I'm trying to say. In other words, whatever comes your way in life, stick with the Lord. In order to stick with the Lord, you got to stick with the Lord by faith. Because faith is true. It's what moves mountains. And the mountains we can metaphor say can be anything that's going on in your life that's got you burdened down. That's got you troubled down. Whatever you're going through in life, God can help you through it. Somebody say amen. He can help you through whatever you're dealing with. Amen. So we're going to keep pressing on. Regardless of the circumstances, amen? So Psalm number one and two, amen? David found out early on in life, he had to have some stick to itness, some stickability. Everybody say stickability. I know it might not be a word in the English language, but you know how we do. We make stuff up as we go. Amen. Somebody need to stick to the Lord real strong. Why? Because if you've been like I've been through this week, and it looked like it was a long week because I had so many things that were going on on a personal basis and, and, and a professional basis. I just asked God for strength and power. Amen. There were times even this week when, when I was with Quentin McKay, and I think that was one of the few times they ever seen me confront somebody. And a guy was going to cut us off in line, and they looked at me. They got kind of scared of me. I said, don't worry, I can handle this. But I just want you to know that, that the guy who was, who was trying to cut off in front of me, he tried to make an amend. But I stood my ground. But I ain't going to fight nobody, but I ain't going to let him put his hand on me neither. So my whole point was is that I had to ask God for faith to get me through this. Amen. After all, we were just paying for grocery in line. And it wasn't nothing worth fighting over, but it was the principle of the thing. Look at, the, so look at somebody and say, it's the principle of the thing. You see, it's important that we have to stick by our principles that God allow us to live by. Somebody say amen. amen. So here David learned early on, being a great man of God, being a great king of Israel, he learned uh, as he wrote some of the songs, he didn't write all 150. It is a collection of many uh, prophets and men of God, Moses and others, Asra and David, and others who wrote the book of Psalms. But we, we, we contribute most of it to David because he was a psalmist. And here he wanted the world to know in the very beginning that his relationship with God was stickability. He was going to stick with the Lord regardless of what happened. And I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what goes on in your life. Whatever happens in your life, you stick with the Lord. Amen. If your health acts up, so be it. I'm sticking with the Lord. If my money go broke, I'm sticking with the Lord. If I ain't got no food on the table, I'm sticking with the Lord. Because I've been around long enough to know, and I can tell you from personal experiences, God can change your situation around. Somebody say amen. I know there's doctors and lawyers, and I know there are all kind of folks on this planet that have a profession that would be able to help you if they could. But it's always going to be in God's hand. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't care if you're burying somebody, and I don't care what kind of life they lived out there. God always has the last word. Somebody say amen. amen. What a wonderful God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. When everybody else wrote you off, when everybody else said no to you, when everywhere you went, nobody else was in agreement with you. I've learned through my personal experience that all it takes is one yes from the Lord, and God can turn it around. Somebody say amen. God can turn it around. Man can get in the way, but God can turn it around. Amen. Amen, somebody. Look to somebody and say, stick with the Lord through thick and thin. Now, how many had some thick situations this week? Oh, my God. 
How many went through some thin situations this week? Come on, somebody. You had one of them easy weeks. And if you were like me, some of my days were thick and thin. I mean, all the way over in Cambridge and Dedham. Come on, somebody. When you go and come, come somebody, somebody eyeballing you. Come on, somebody. Somebody sticking up their finger and cutting you off in traffic. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I'm here to talk to you today. I hope you're here to say amen. Amen. I hope you wore your seatbelt today, too, because I'm taking you for a ride. Come on, somebody. This ride ain't over at Six Flags. This ain't at Disney World. This is on the 12th floor at 757. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. He said, bless it. Everybody said, bless it. Bless it. Hallelujah. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. If somebody telling you something wrong, huh, you need to shut your ears off. Come on, somebody. If somebody trying to convince you to do something wrong, you need to shut them off. He said, blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And while you're at it, not stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Come on, somebody. But if you're going to find delight, if you're going to find joy, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law, I said in the law, does he meditate, think about, pray about, hope about, have faith about, both day and what? I'm here to tell you today, when you stick with the Lord, he'll see you through it all. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about what others think about you or what others feel about you. Just stick with the Lord. Amen. Others may abandon you. Others may talk about you. They may roll their eyes at you. They may scandalize your name. But I'm here to tell you, stick with the Lord. Through thick and through thin. Somebody said through thick and thin. Day and night. Stick with the Lord. My Lord. Verse 3 says, and he that stick with the Lord, he that meditate day and night, shall be like a tree. Lord, have mercy. What kind of a tree? A tree planted by the rivers of water. Oh, my God. Always having some nourishment or refreshment. that bring it forth his fruit and his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does is, somebody said, when you live for the Lord, wherever you go, wherever you touch, will prosper. Lord have mercy. If you can get that idea and concept in your head that God is with you wherever you go, and whatever you do, your fruit will bring forth much. And in due season, God will cause you to reap if you faint not. Amen. Verse 4 is that the ungodly are not so. Why is that? Because they're like the shaft which the wind, when it blows, blows it away. Verse 5 says, therefore the ungodly shall not. I repeat, it's an emergency broadcast. The ungodly shall not stand in judgment. No sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why is that? Because David is trying to tell you and me something. Verse 5, he tells you they won't be able to stand there. And verse 6 gives you the explanation. For the Lord knows the way. He knows the way of the righteous. But the ungodly that look like they're getting away with things, that look like they're getting ahead of things, look like they're out in front and control things, but when God, but when God speaks, when God's bringing the past, the ungodly will perish. My, my, my. Wait a minute. What kind of trouble is man in? This week I was downtown with Quinton Micaiah, and I was downtown at 251 Causeway getting my fishing license. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. I, I went down there, and God let me know you're going to continue to be fishing with men. 
or you may go to your creek or your spot. Ain't that right, Eddie? Because I can show up anywhere. I can blow up your spot. You see me anywhere. Come on, somebody. You don't know where I might show up, but you see, you always got to be on high alert because God is always with you. And when God is with you, whatever your hands touch will cause to be prosperous. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. Whatever fruit you're bearing, when you stick with the Lord through thick and thin, even though the situation getting muddy, even though things get cloudy, I'm in to tell you, stick with the Lord, and God will see you through it all. My Lord. Wait a minute. Verse 2, chapter 2, verse 1. He continues on. He continues on. Why do the heathen, why they get mad? See, the heathen don't care nothing for you. And the people imagine a vain thing. Always thinking you're up to no good because you're trying to serve the Lord. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. Not only against the Lord, but against his anointed one. Against his anointed saying, let us break their bands. Let's bust up that church. Let's bust up the members. Let's get them upset and angry with one another. That's what the enemy is trying to do. Whenever you're having a problem in ministry, it's usually because the enemy is trying to bust up the work. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Look at somebody and say, but it ain't going to happen here. Verse 3 said, let us, they said, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord have their derision. See, they think they're getting away with something, but God got his eyes on things. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> and verse 5 said, then shall we, he speak with them in his wrath and vax them in the sore displeasure. Yea, have I set my kings upon the holy hills of Zion. I will declare, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask to me. Look at somebody and say, Ask to the Lord. Ask to the Lord. And he said, And I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance and the uppermost part of the earth for thy possession. In other words, God said, as long as I'm in charge, you're not going to ever go without. Amen. Amen. Whatever you need. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. I said, whatever you need. Amen. Last time, if you checked in with the Lord, whatever you need or whatever's going on in your life, when you stick with the Lord through thick and thin, whatever you need, I'm here to tell you, God's got it. You believe that this morning? Yes, he says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessels. A few more verses. Be wise now. Look around at somebody and touch them by the hand. They ain't going to hurt you. Touch them by the hand and say, Be wise now. Be wise. I mean, touch them real good and say, Be wise now. Be wise now. David says, Be wise now. Therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Ah. Kiss the son. You ought to give Jesus a kiss. Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. Huh. When his wrath is kindled with a little, then he finished in conclusion saying, Blessed are they. Huh. Blessed are they that put their Trust in him. Right. When you put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. When you put your confidence in God. Amen. When you have committed your ways unto him. Yeah. When you're serious about serving him in the beauty of holiness. I'm here to tell you, God will turn things out all right. Yes, he will. God will make things work on your behalf. Amen. You ain't got to worry about what man may think or feel about you. Amen. Because man can't put you nowhere. He said, fear not him that can destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy the body and the soul and put it in hell. But when you're on the Lord's side, Amen. when you're working with the Lord and sticking with him, it doesn't matter what comes down the pipe. It doesn't matter what comes down your street. It doesn't matter what happens in your neighborhood. God got a way of putting a shield around you. God got a way of protecting you. 
find God in you. Where you could have lost your life, God was right there. His holy angels came and intervened on your behalf. What a mighty God we serve. You know how I know that God is able to take care of you? Because when the enemy is mad with you, he going to come out of every direction to try to attack you. But if you learn to stand still, come on, somebody. Look at somebody that keep your hands up. Look at somebody that keep your praise up. See, when you're going through thick and thin and learn to give God the praise, I'm here to tell you God is going to respond in a positive way. Let me tell you a story about Moses and the children of Israel. You already know it. And I love telling these stories. Y'all like the stories from the Bible? Yeah. Come on, somebody. I just, I just read them and read them and keep reading them. And every time I read them, God give me a little bit more. And I remember when the children of Israel had been brought up out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of sin, going to the promised land. And I know that sometimes people are so preoccupied with the milk and honey, they forget about the salvation. Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to tell you right now, when they were out in the wilderness and God was feeding them with manna, and God was feeding them with quail meat. And you know, when quail travel a great distance, their wings get so heavy after traveling, they begin to fly closer and closer to the ground, so close to the ground that you can catch them as they fly by. Amen. And God provided meat, and they roast that, that, that meat to a, a delicate taste. Come on, somebody. They were able to take some manna from heaven, but in the midst of all their eating, they didn't have no water. And the Bible said the children of Israel railed on Moses. So you brought us and our children and our cattle out of Egypt and you brought us in the wilderness and we don't have any water to drink. And Moses got uh, beside himself. You ever got beside yourself? In other words, he found himself in a thick situation. He didn't think he was going to get out of this, but he, the Bible said he sought the Lord. Anytime you're in trouble, anytime you're going through something thick or thin, you ought to sought God first. You ought to check out with God first and see what God can do for you. My Lord. The Bible said when, when Moses cried out to God, God told him, I want you to go up to Hebron. Go up to Hebron, and God said, I'm going to stand before you, before the rock. And God said, you see that staff I gave you? You take that staff with you. The same one that brought you up out of Egypt. The same one that I gave you. And when I gave it to you and told you to put it down and turn into a king cobra, he went to run, but he forgot God gave it to him. Sometimes God gives you something, and you're afraid of what God gave you. And y'all ain't with me right now. I'm trying to tell you something. Even through thick and thin, God will take you to the end. Yes, yes. Oh. Yes, 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 Moses went up, and God told Moses, and while you're at it, get some of them elders. I want them to see this. Come on, somebody. When God performs a miracle, the world is going to know about it. The Bible said, God told Moses, you take some of them elders with you and go out before the people, and I'm going to stand before the rock, and I want you to strike the rock, and out of that rock will come flowing water. But when the elders saw all this water, and the people started filling up their vessels and drinking water, and the cows were licking up water, come on, somebody. The camels were drinking water, come on, somebody. Every man, child was drinking water, and everybody had bread, meat, and water. Somebody had to give God a break. You ought to thank God you got some ice cream in your refrigerator. You ought to thank God you got some pork chop in your refrigerator. You ought to thank God you got some beef hot dogs. Oh, you have to say amen. amen. You ought to thank God you got food in your cabinet. Shoes on your feet. You got a roof over your head. You ought to thank God for this place. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you. I don't know any other churches that are praising God and getting preached on the 12th floor in the building. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. Amen. He said, high and lifted up. 
my Lord. The Bible says as soon as Moses did this and the people were corrected by the hand of God, you would have think that would have been the end of the story. But as soon as that, that thickness turned into thinness and Moses trusts God, the Bible said, how come that no good nation of the Amalekites? Are y'all with me on this? There are some Amalekites living in this neighborhood. There are some Amalekites that live in Roxbury. They live in Dorchester and Mattapan. Sometimes they come all the way down south and come up north. Sometimes they're over across the river and they come over to Roxbury. Oh, come on, somebody. There's an Amalekite that are also of your own household. They don't want you praising God, and they don't want you worshiping God, and they ain't paying no rent. Oh, you don't have to say amen. They want you always to hand them something, and if you don't hand it, they want to take it from you. But the devil is a liar and the father of it. When God tell you that you are blessed, I don't care what nobody else say. Amen. You can claim that deity. Yeah. If God say you're blessed, yeah. nobody else can curse you. Wait a minute. Them Amalekites say we don't like. We don't like the nation of Israel. And guess what? Because they didn't like Israel, God said I don't like you. Are y'all with me on this? They were so wicked, they attacked the elders and the children that was on the end part when they come out of Egypt. They attacked and murdered men and women, uh, children, the elders, and the little ones. And God got beside himself and told Moses, I'm going to annihilate them from the face of the earth. In fact, it got so deep in God's spirit that 613 commandments, that in all the commandments, was to annihilate the Amalekite from the face of the earth. I mean, you're in trouble when God says he's going to get rid of you. My Lord. The Bible said when Moses heard that the battle was coming, that Moses got beside himself. And he consulted God again. He found himself going from one thick situation to another thick situation. Where the Amalekites would come to battle the nation of Israel. And Moses instructed Joshua, pick me in a great warrior to go out and fight against them. I'm going to take my rod and I'm going to sit up on the mountain. And I'm going to stretch forth my hand to God. And as long as my hands are up, the battle is my battle. The battle of God is going to give us. Long as you keep your hands up. Long as you keep your praise up. Long as you keep worshiping God. The battle is going to be in your favor. Amen. The Bible said, you better keep in mind. Let me just give you the backdrop. This man is 85 plus years of age. This man is pushing 100. To keep your hands up, just throw your hands up. Come on, somebody. You see, it won't be long before gravity and your strength begin to pull them down. This man is 80 going on 90. Come on, somebody. His arms got heavy, and they would drop down. But I'm here to tell you, every now and then when you're going through something, you're going to need a prayer partner. You're going to need a prayer warrior. You don't have to ask somebody to help you to get through what you're going through. And the Bible says that hell got on one side, and I'm here to tell you, Joshua got on the other side, and the Bible said they slid a stone behind Moses and told him, you take a seat, but keep your hands up. Look at somebody that said, you can rest, but keep your hands up. See, sometimes we forget that we belong to the Lord. And God is the one that brought us through what we're going through. Sometimes we forget when we take a rest. You got to keep on praising God. I've learned a long time ago, sometimes when you ain't got the right word, you can't speak, you can't pray, you can't get things through. Sometimes all you have to do is just throw your hand up. Lord have mercy. Come on, somebody, just throw your hand up. Don't you know God understands when you throw your hand up? 
The Bible said Moses was sitting there on this stone, and his arms, arms got heavy, and he would drop them. And the Malachite would start winning. But when Joshua got on one side, lift up his right hand. Hell got on the left side, lift up his left hand. The battle turned again. I'm here to tell you, whatever you're going through, when you keep your hands up, the battle is in your face. Why? Because you're praising God. Come on, somebody. Keep your hands in the air like you really do care. Come on, somebody. Give God the praise. Anyhow. I mean, listen to this. The scripture said he didn't just keep his hand up because they started this war. This battle started in the morning. It happened in the afternoon. It went on past 3 o'clock. It started getting late in the evening. Now, I don't know how long you can praise God. Some of y'all are pretty good. You can praise him about an hour or two. Let me talk to this side. Sometimes you can praise him about an hour or two. But then your stomach get to growl. Oh, y'all with me on this? And you say, Lord, I'll be back and pick up uh, my praise where I left it off. But I got to go get some nourishment. Oh, y'all with me on this? But I'm here to tell you whether you're eating or praying or sleeping or awake or walking or talking, you can still give God the praise. day, all afternoon, all evening, until the sun went down, did they lift Moses' hands up. You can't help but praise God for all that he has done for you. They won the battle because he kept his hands up. You don't win the battle because God will help you keep your hands up. And when they defeated the Amalekite, God told Moses, I made a promise to you, and I want you to make a memorial and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua Amen. what happened here today. Amen. And the Bible said that Moses looked up his eyes unto the Lord. Come on, somebody. He looked out over the plains, lifted up his hands and said, Jehovah, me see, the Lord God is my banner. Don't you realize God is your shield and your buckle? He's your mighty bearer. Whatever you're going through, stick with the Lord through thick and thin. Whatever you're going through, stick with the Lord through thick and thin. I don't care how thick things get. I don't care how much in the mix it happened. Stick with the Lord anyhow. Come on, somebody. How many ever had to glue something? Oh, come on, somebody. How many ever had to glue something and you messed around and got the glue on you and the glue on what you was gluing? Don't y'all look at me like that. That's the same way you got to get the word on you. And I don't care where you go, you can't shake it. You can't get away from it because you're stuck on you. Oh, y'all ain't with me. You remember the Band-Aid commercial, I am stuck on Band-Aid. Are y'all with me on this? You got to be stuck on the Lord the same way the Lord is stuck on you. In other words, ain't nothing going to separate you from the love of God and be in Christ Jesus. You got to get stuck on the Lord. Amen. Y'all ain't going to hear this. Because some of y'all are stuck up. Don't y'all say amen. We get saved and sanctified, and then we get bougie. I know y'all don't want me to go there. God don't like a proud look. Come on, somebody. Because you forgot who brought you where you're at. You forgot that God brought you through. And he brought you from a mighty long way. You didn't think you were going to make it. But God was right there. You see, Moses understood. Me see. Not only mean that the Lord God 
is my banner. But whatever I'm going through, when the enemy tries to attack, he's my shield and my buckler. He is my secret place of the Most High. And David said, I shall shine under the shadow. My Lord, what better place can you be than in the shadow of the Almighty? What a wonderful God we serve. Look at somebody and say, what a mighty God we serve. Not only will he give you water and a thirst to land. Not only will he provide food for you when you're hungry. Not only will he beat back the enemy. But he said, when you learn to get along with me, when your ways begin to please me, when you begin to stick with me through thick and thin, God said, I love you so much that I'll take your enemy that's supposed to be against you and I'll make your enemy to be at peace with you. Somebody started out to get you is now giving you some money. Are y'all with me on this? Somebody is supposed to be running you over going to give you a ride to your destination. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. I'm trying to tell you what God can do for you if you learn to trust him through thick and thin. I told you, I grew up in the project. And when I grew up, you just couldn't live in the project. You either had to know how to fight or know how to cut somebody. Y'all ain't with me on this. Come on, somebody. And you didn't know who was going to pull what on you. But you better be ready to scrap. I'm sorry, that's an old word. That's, that means that mean fight. Throw down. Do battle. Is that, are y'all with me on this? Come on, somebody. You can't be talking trash and can't back it up. And my eyes carry knives. Some of them carry Swiss blades. Come on, somebody. And I heard a guy tell you, you don't want to bother with me. I, 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 used to, I used to be scared of a guy called Inky. That was his nickname. And that boy will pull a knife on you so fast. Come on, somebody. They said, William, don't, don't fight him because he don't fight fair. I was going to tear him up. Middle, middle of the West, I was going to tear him up. I was going to eat him up. Don't be with him. And then he, he started pushing me. And one thing kept me from eating him up is that I always remember they said he got a switchblade. Now, for those who don't know what a switchblade is, you didn't have to open it up. You push the button and pop. Come on, somebody. And they would tell you, you mess with me. I'll cut you too thin to fry and too thick to boil. In other words, when they cut you, and I see men get cut. I see a grown man mess with another man's what? He was told, don't be going down there messing with that. His name was Peter. He was a handsome man, good looking man. But he was fooling around with another man's wife. The man ran up to him. And I don't know, sometimes I'm in places where I see things that if you weren't with me, you wouldn't believe it. He ran up to Peaches and he said, didn't I tell you to stay away from my wife? And he stepped back. And I looked and it looked like nothing happened. And a moment's time, his face broke out with nothing but blood. Cut his face up. The next day, his face was packed with nothing but cotton. But I'm here to tell you, when the devil messes with you, God will cut him up. I'm telling you, God will cut him up. If he ain't never been cut up before, let him mess with God and see what God will do. See, you, you didn't know where I was going with that. You ain't going to know where I've been because you don't know where I'm coming from. Come on, somebody. See, I'm, I'm easy going on the outside. But inside, I'm as tough as a rusty nail. Come on, somebody. You think you got me persuaded. I'm just looking at you. And I'm praying, Lord, let me hold on to my holiness. Because I'm about ready to catch another case. 
Are y'all with me right now? I'm trying to tell you, God help me. Because I ain't trying to hurt nobody, but I ain't trying to get hurt. You know my nature, and I ask for grace and mercy. Lord help me. Wait a minute, let me, let me get back, because I got carried away there. That's all right. You see, you got to do what God tells you to do. Look around at somebody and say, you got to do what God tells you to do. You know why I know this? Because when the Israel got in trouble with God, and these people were always in and out of trouble. They, they wouldn't stick with God through thick and thin. Whenever some real doctrine would come, somebody come with a new thing or something that sounded like a good, anyhow, they would go after that. Amen. And they always got in trouble even though God provided for them. Amen. And the Bible said when the nation of Israel was in trouble with, with, with King uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar of the uh, Babylonian Empire, that the, 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 the king was coming down to take over Israel. This was going to be the second attack to take everything that Israel had. And the prophet Jeremiah, they despised him. Come on, somebody. I find being a preacher today that people, when they look at a preacher, they despise you. Come on, somebody. You're trying to stand for Christ, and they don't want to hear nothing about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jeremiah preached for 40 years, proclaiming the gospel, but yet he didn't feel that he was qualified or adequate enough to proclaim God's word. But God told him, I see your heart. And I know that inside of you, I put a spirit called willingness. If you're willing to serve me, I'll be there for you. Amen. Lord. Amen. When we learn to be obedient to the spirit of God, God can move the mountain. Jeremiah told the people of Israel, listen to what God prophesied. He told Daniel, he told Habakkuk, he told me, and he told the prophet Israel, you're going into captivity for 70 years. Because of the spirit of error. What they call apostolic apostasy. Are y'all with me on this? The Bible said when they went in to this frame of mind, God said, I'm going to turn you over to your enemy, which was King Nebuchadnezzar. Not because he was great, but because of the spirit of disobedience from the nation of Israel. Amen. The Bible said year after year, the prophet Jeremiah will weep for the people. Amen. It don't bother you when you know people need to live right and they ain't living right? That's right, no. yeah. You're telling your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your niece, your nephew. You're telling your family and friends, get right. Get right. Jesus is coming. And they still hiding their heart. They figure if I come to church and shake the pastor's hand, get my name on the road book, I'm on my way to heaven. Look at somebody and say, who are you playing the game with? See, see, you got some smooth talkers that think they're going to sweet talk their way into heaven. Come on, somebody. It ain't going to be no sweet talking. Jeremiah was preaching and proclaiming for the elders in the temple before the people of God. And in the midst of it, he was prophesying. He wore a wooden yoke around his neck, saying that they would be in bondage for 70 years. And the Bible said there was a local prophet by the name of Hananiah. And Hananiah got in his thick head that he was going to prophesy to the people of God and tell them something that God didn't even tell them. Are y'all with me on this? You know God's word is true because God's word has an anointing on it and the anointing will break the yoke. Look at somebody and say, whatever you do, Stick with the Lord through thick and thin. Amen. Amen. 
Some of y'all will stick with him as long as there's a thin tribulation. But when the child begins to lay it on thick, oh, come on, somebody. You got to turn into Gorilla Glue. Come on, somebody. I'm going to hold on, Lord. I'm shaking, but I'm holding on. I'm scared, but I'm holding on. I'm going through, but I'm holding on. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. But you're here, you hear me there. You hold on. Don't give up. And don't give in. And on Hannah now, with his lying self, come out there and start prophesying. Not only did he prophesy before the priests and the people, but he had a nerve. Somebody said the audacity. The audacity. To prophesy in the house of God. Telling God's people, don't worry about what Jeremiah told you. The Bible said he went up to Jeremiah, took the wooden yoke off, and broke it. And told him, thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, and God didn't even send him. You better know if God called you, because your child and your tribulation is going to come, and you better know whose side you're leaning on. Thus say the Lord, God told me that y'all not going into bondage for 70 years. Two full years y'all going up. And the people say, I'll take two over 70. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You don't want to keep going through something if you know that time could be short. And that sounds pretty good, but that ain't what God said. Amen. Look at somebody say, it sounds good, sounds good. but it ain't right. No, y'all didn't hear that. I said it sound good, good. but it ain't right. I didn't say right. I said right. Like an apple that get right. Look at somebody say it sound good, but it ain't right. It sound good, but it ain't right. The Bible said even when the people heard it, they was in agreement with Hananiah, and even Jeremiah stepped out of his safety zone and even said, Amen. Amen. He didn't know no better. If God would change his mind of saying something, I think he was in favor. But as soon as Jeremiah stepped out, walked away, come on somebody. While he was on his way down the street, the Bible said God spoke to him. Are y'all with me on this? God told Jeremiah, go back and tell that lion, Hananiah, that he had prophesied falsely and called the people to believe in a lie than trust in the truth. Are y'all with me on this? People today will believe anything that come over the radio. Anything that come over the TV. Anything somebody put in a book. But they won't read the holy book and believe what God said. If God said it, God will bring it to pass. You can base your life and your salvation for all eternity on the word of God. God says he called the people to trust in a lie than to believe in the truth. It's a dangerous preacher. It scares me. I don't know about y'all, but it scares me when a preacher get up and preach and don't even open the Bible. Are y'all with me on this? Now, I'm scared now. Come on, somebody. Because give me the benefit, give me the benefit of my faith. I didn't say the benefit of my job. I said the benefit of my faith. But when you open the word, I can read a little bit with you and say, yeah, that's what he read, all right. But 
But when he goes quoting things, what they call off the wall scriptures. Because I, I, I got in trouble like that when I first got saved. I told my mama, mama, didn't God say, bless the, bless the child that got it on? Right. And she said, God ain't saying nothing like that. You better go and talk to Billy Holiday. <laughs> no, I ain't with me on this. In other words, I don't mind being corrected if I was wrong, but if it's in God's word and somebody trying to tell me otherwise, the devil's a liar and the father of it. Why? Because when God says something, it's going to come to pass. Amen. When preachers are preaching and they're not preaching God's word, you better be very careful. So your job is to go home and check out what I've been preaching about. You can, you can listen to a good sermon and say, oh, the spirit is moving, pray the Lord, but you better check this out. You better tear a page out of Ronald Reagan's, President Ronald Reagan's book. You can trust, but you better verify. Are uh, y'all with me on this? I'm not crazy about him because he messed up my pension. But he did leave me with a quote. Trust, but verify. Look at somebody say, trust, trust. but verify. Yeah. You got to go and check that word out for yourself. Don't leave it for the preacher. Don't leave it for somebody else to tell it to you. Read it for yourself. Yes. Now, let me tell you something. That sounds like the end of the story with Hannah and I. Look at somebody say, uh-uh. That man got in more trouble. You had millions of people believing. On, you see how powerful words are? You see how powerful words are? That this man told him that he broke the yoke off of, of the prophet Jeremiah, and God said the yoke wouldn't yoke that they were going to carry up to Babylon. I turned that yoke of wood into a yoke of iron. And because Babylon is going to rule over you, he's going to rule all the nations around you for at least 70 years. Amen. And while you're at it, Jeremiah, go back and tell that lying prophet, mm -hmm. Hananiah, Amen. I'm going to kill him in seven months. Amen. I don't know about you, but it looked like we need to line things up. Because you don't know when God's going to call you. But God told him, I'm going to kill him in seven months for playing with my word and deceiving the people of God. Look at somebody say, it's a dangerous thing to play with God. Come on, somebody. Because God is not a plaything. If you want a toy, look at somebody say, if you want a toy, Go down to Torres R Us. Y'all don't need it. Because see, some people want to play. Church, come on, somebody. They want all the attention. They want all the accolade. They want to be a focus of attention. Come on, somebody. If nobody will ever pat you on the back, if nobody will ever thank you, if nobody will ever give you the praise that do to your name, then stop for a moment and thank God for giving you salvation. And keep your hands up. This ain't no stick up. And you don't have to be stuck up. But keep your hands up. Didn't God bring you from a mighty long way? Some of y'all sitting up here now. And I was supposed to preach your funeral. But when God said, not so, when God told Death to behave himself and to go about his business, Death couldn't do nothing but back away and be obedient to the Spirit. Why? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, he took the keys of death. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did. All power is in God's hand. I 
I'm coming home. Lord have mercy. Look at somebody and say, stay strong in the temple of God. Lord have mercy. When I think about Jesus and how good he's been to me, when I think about going over the highways and byways, when I think about crossing the street and coming back home, when I think about where I go and come and when I lay down at night, when I think about my eyes and my ears, when I think about my breathing, when I think about my knees and my back, when I think about how good God been to me, when I think about when I was broke and didn't have anything, and God was there all the time, when I was looking for help and nobody come to my rescue, but I looked to the hills. I said I looked to the hills from which cometh my help. And I knew all along that my help came from the Lord that created the heaven and the earth. I know some of y'all say, I, I just can't help myself with that. I get all excited. You ought to get a little more excited. You ought to show a little more enthusiasm, a little more happiness of what God has done. Right, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.